Let's all stand and sing page 188. Great gospel songs and hymns, 188.
Good morning. You may be seated. I figured the choir would be smiling a whole lot more since I was back. I guess that lets me know I wouldn't really miss. Amen. What was that, Sherry? They smiled last week. Didn't expect that out of you, but I expected it out of somebody. <laughs> yeah, I expected it out of somebody. But <clears throat> Glad to have you here with us today. Thank you for allowing us to be away last week on vacation. We watched online. Seemed like y'all had a great service. Brother Dwayne done a great job. Um, attendance was way up, so I thank you for that, which that's probably another indication that I need to take vacation more. But... Um, it was a great service we watched online. I hope you've all had a great week. I know we have. Uh, traveling back home yesterday, it was an excitement to get back to home. Um, you know, there's that saying, there's no place like home, and that's exactly right. Because at my home, I don't have 14 people staying in a room above me, dragging furniture at 12 o'clock at night, keeping me awake. So uh, last night was a good night. Got some good rest and uh, ready for the day, ready to uh, share with you what God's laid on our heart. But uh, we have some announcements this morning. Sunday school's at 10, worship services at 11. Uh, dinner and activities are off on Wednesday nights for summer break. Um, this week uh, will be different than any other week because uh, we're getting ready for revival. Amen? Amen? We're getting ready to celebrate with each other and grow together more as a church and spend some time together uh, for revival. Um, got some prayer requests this week, and then we'll get into what's happening uh, those of you, uh, Tammy Ledford's brother, Terry Reeves, um, passed away yesterday uh, after his battle with cancer, and uh, he passed away yesterday morning, and um, the church has been asked, they're up there now making arrangements uh, at Bearden Funeral Home, and those will be posted out today. We'll send an email out with those, but they have asked the church to feed the family after the funeral in the Family Life Center. Um, you can give monetary donations to Melba or Tina, or you can also go online and make those under the give, where you pay for Bible school shirts and all those other things, there's a uh, donation tab under there, and it'll go to that fund to feed the family. I will tell you this: from what I remember, they have a pretty large family, don't they? So uh, they've they they was quite a few of them, and they married out and married out and married out, and uh, they're a, they're a pretty good sized family. So uh, we need you to uh, not put the weight of this on one or two families of the church. We all need to come together. Uh, Terry was a member here, and, and I know. Some of you probably haven't seen him, but uh, he's been sick for some time now. So uh, please lift them up and remember Martha. Uh, no mother, no mother should have to bury a child. <laughs> my greatest fear is to have to lay with my boys and to just know that somebody's going through that pain while I'm still here enjoying mine hurts to the core. So lift Miss Martha up, pray for her. Tammy, losing a sibling, happens all the time, I know, but this is some of ours, so lift them up, pray for them. Be in prayer for that. Uh, the lost, the sick, the shut-ins, our youth, our schools, leaders of our country, the military, unspoken request, Eddie Lynn, Pink and Virginia Townley, Tony Wiley, and per request, this next one, John Amuckus, has been asked to be removed from the prayer list. And all God's people said... Uh, Tabitha Chastain finished her last treatment this week. I was so excited to get that text message of that chalkboard that said my last chemo treatment. So, thank you for all your prayers through all of this. Um, I know a lot of you have said that I made it look easy, and it really was not. Um, I'm pretty good at keeping up a brave front. Um, I will ask that you continue to pray. Obviously, I'm not in the clear. I'll go in about six weeks for a CT scan, and I'll have another colonoscopy, and then another CT scan the next year. About nine months out, and after that, I'm not sure where we'll go from there. So as long as we're, I'm just praying that the CT scan and the colonoscopy this year are clear. Amen. Anybody that can live with Ricky can endure pain. <laughs> so... Sean Carnahan, Mark Bailey, Dorothy Martin, uh, Kathy Downing, Brian Stenick, Patricia Cranford. Uh, some of you may know, I think she's about 18, 19 days, been in Melbourne, Florida. Um, had an infection in both knees after being on a cruise, and they're trying to get her home. So keep praying for them as uh, Lori and them try to get her home from Florida to Georgia. Uh, Easton Roper, uh, keep praying for him. I talked to his uncle this week, Nick, that came and played the drums some for us. 
Um, Easton's had his 17th surgery on uh, his cleft palate, and this one was the most extensive. They took bone from his leg, put in his jaws, took um, run screws from his jawbone up to his eye socket. I mean, it was a very, very extensive surgery, so extensive from what I understand they took arteries and moved them around and he can't lay on his left side for a while because it'll cut circulation off. This bone won't grow and they'll have to go in and redo the whole thing. So uh, please, please pray for a successful recovery. He is a great young man, one of the best personalities you'll ever meet for all he's been through. Um, but somebody like that that goes through all these challenges as a child is going to be a great adult. So just pray for uh, him, pray for Matt, uh, his dad, and uh, just, just lift them up. It, it's it's a great, great thing. Um, I, I so, so hope none of you ever have to go through that with your children. Um, Aaron Morgan and uh, also Kelly Welling, he had a little bit of a fall Friday uh, out of his van and went today, and he's got an infection on three antibiotics, and if it don't work, they'll have to put him in the hospital and do IV antibiotics. Um, let's remember the families again of Terry Reeves and Stanley Abernathy. Jeff's brother passed away unexpectedly this week. Uh, Julianne, that was her dad, so uh, please lift them up in prayer, keep with them. Um, pray for little Bella, they said she's taking it kind of hard. Yeah, I'd like to thank Jeff Bradford for uh, uh, hard, and first time you know, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, this week, um, or well, some of it's this week, some's next week, Wednesday, July the 12th and the 26th, vertical students, uh, uh, 6 through 12, will be doing kickball and devotion. Uh, I think that's going to take place at the Dawson County Park, so they need to have their uh, waiver signed, and, and that's on the website as well. need to have that waiver signed and so they can travel and be there and be under the care of our youth group leaders. Uh, this next Saturday, July the 15th, the Men's Prayer Breakfast, 8 a.m., Family Life Center. Jessica Castleberry will be coming to speak with us. Uh, if you can, text Stan or me or Joey and let us know if you're coming. Uh, um, let us know how many we need to expect uh, to be here so I can get the food picked up for that. Uh, the 15th through the 19th, uh, we'll have Revival. Brother Dwayne that was here last week will be with us in Revival. 15th on Saturday, we'll be kicking off for uh, uh, Youth Day. I think the little kids, Michelle, you want to tell what they're doing or Tabitha, one of y'all want? Tabitha's house from 1230 to 3.30 Saturday. Okay. Okay, and I think there's a form for that as well, too, right, Tab, with the travel form. I have a few if you want to fill it out this morning. I've got a few with me. There's right. a form online, too, to yeah. sign up if you're coming so we can plan. Yeah. Okay. And Kip, you want to tell what the teens will be doing? Yeah, we're, we're going to meet. Uh, you'll watch the email this week. We're going to meet down at the Lake House around 12 o'clock that day. We're going to run from 12 to 4. Uh, we do need parents and chaperones, whether you just want to come hang out with us or help watch. Um, but if you have your own life jacket and you want to bring it, that would be great. Bring your, you know, towels and sunscreen and that kind of stuff. And we'll have a, a good day out there from 12 to 4. And also, we have some um, the same release form we need for you to sign. Uh, we'll have some that day. If not, you can go online and get them also. But from 12 to 4 that day, and then we'll put the address out on the email. Yeah, and after that, we encourage you all to come back here to the church. Uh, Caroline, you've got an announcement about music for youth yeah. revival. So um, today, um, I sent out email this church just for like 30 minutes and um, it'd be really helpful if from like baby pre-k to even high school and college age if you could please just stay after um, for 30 minutes we're going to run over some of the songs that we're going to sing um, on youth night revival um, i'm so excited and i'm so grateful um, to get to do this with your children um, youth night has always been a big 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 thing for me um, growing up I loved Youth Night of Revival and um, I just ask that you pray for me and pray for the kids and just pray for the service Amen Saturday September the 9th will be Harmony's uh, Women's Conference Betty Ann you want to say anything on that? Okay Lisa <laughs> The link is live to sign up for that so please do that so we can get a good head count and then the link is also live for anybody that Uh, will the men be serving that that night? Are we doing a dinner or anything like we did last time? Just one day, Baptist. Just one day, all right. We've done such a bad job, guys, they won't let us do it again. So, man, just building the spirits up today, I tell you. 
pickleball at Harmony. Um, if you have any questions, it's every Monday night, 7 to 8.30. Um, of course, it'll be this Monday, and then we won't have it the next Monday because we'll be in revival. But, Joy, do you want to say anything on pickleball? Yeah, just come. It's a great sport. It's a fun sport. Just come out and be with us Monday, 7 o'clock. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, again, please sign up online for the late day and the kids' pool day. Um, as well as the vertical kickball nights. Let's do that. Lunches of Love, several of you have been doing this. The church has been doing it. We've received some outside donations that have been overwhelming as well. Uh, donations are being accepted for our new ministry to serve local families in need. Prefer to donate money online to purchase uh, supplies than do it at HPC Dawson under Give. And there's a Lunches of Love fund. Uh, Non-perishable items, there's boxes out there and there's boxes in the hallway back here. Uh, right now, Katie, Kurt, we're done three, four families. That's what we're doing each week. Three families, uh, nine children, and you guys have fed them for three weeks now. Um, plenty of food for lunch throughout the week. We've got another delivery today. So I want to thank y'all so much for your donations. I know that, uh, they appreciate it, and they're so excited to see us when we pull up. And um, I know there's more needs out there, and I just I want y'all to pray with me that they reach out so we can help them too. Thank y'all. Thank you. I have an announcement to make. If everybody look at your bulletin just for a minute, it's a pet peeve of mine, but look how some of them may be folded crooked. And I want to ask a favor. If anybody knows where the paper cutter that I used to fold these straight went from Bible school, I'd love to have it back because I can't seem to find it in the church anywhere. So, uh, it, it drives me crazy to fold these crooked for you guys. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I did expect that from you. <laughs> so, but anyway, if anybody knows where that uh, tan paper cutter is, because I flush them up to the edge and fold them multiple at a time, I'd appreciate it if we could get it back in the print room. Uh, that's just a, a pet peeve of mine and a, a, I guess a small gripe from the pulpit, if we could call it that. Anybody else have any other announcements? Okay, the, we'll need that uh, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. We won't need it for Saturday night, correct, because that's youth night. But if anybody wants to volunteer to help with Children's Church during the revival hours, uh, it'll be more than just ours. Some of the visitors may want to use that as well. So uh, thank you, Shauna, for heading that up and doing that. So if we get some volunteers for that. Uh, the the preacher sign up is out front for anybody that's wanting to do that. Or have, if you have questions, let me know. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Sherry? I just wanted to ask Brad for Ethan. Uh, he had surgery on Monday for a growth on the base of his spine, and it was much more complicated than the surgeon thought it was going to be. And he's been flat on his stomach since Monday. Uh, this is hard. Ricky? You can confirm the revival time at 7 or 7.30 service time? It's 7.30. Yeah, 11 and 7.30. Yeah. Anybody else? Come back into another corner. That's the problem. Okay. Uh, I gotta leave. I don't know where to go. Unless you can. If anybody knows of a place that has a one bedroom for rent, please let us uh, help Brother Kenny find a place that he can get into and stay. Contact me with that. I know pretty much all the situation and what he can afford. So please contact me with anything you may know of. Yeah, Sheila has surgery on Friday. I was fixing to say that. Sheila's having surgery to have her gallbladder removed on Friday. Um, they said it wouldn't take any of the meanness out. They would <laughs> leave all that in there. But y'all pray for Sheila. This is her first Sunday here in a couple of four or five weeks. She's been in a lot of pain, and I'm just glad she's able to get it out and get it over with. So pray for Sheila and pray for Michael as he takes care of her and gets her back together. Anybody else? Praise report. We love those. Amen. And that's the longest we've gone since it started. Yeah. Two years. Yeah, because we've been here two years. Thank God. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Well, it's time to take up the offering. If everybody would please stand.
If you don't give here today, you can always give online at hbcdawson backslash give. Uh, there's a tab on there for that as well. So uh, we appreciate all you do, everybody that takes to make it happen. Uh, certainly is good to see all of you here again today. Um, love to see you throughout the week, see you here Saturday, enjoy the fun. I'm sure there'll be watermelon or sandwiches or something down at the lake. We'll have stuff down there. Uh, I want you to know those times are just as important as these church times are. So uh, this week when you're thinking about, well, do I want to go or should I go or whatever, the answer is yes. Just, just say, well, Tony said yes, I need to go. Uh, God says yes, you need to go. Today as we go into our message, we're going to be talking about relationships and not only your relationship with your family, your relationship with your children, the church, but your relationship with God. Um, worked on this some this week on vacation. I've got notes on three or four different pages, so I'm going to do my very best to put it together. Um, but as we go into this revival season, there is nothing better to sit under a shade tree in camping chairs eating watermelon and talking about Jesus and what's, what we expect. How many of you expect something good to happen in revival? Amen. You know, we should go into it expecting something great to happen in revival because we lay up all these prayers all year long. And I, I think in harmony uh, with not having spring revival, we have a little more prayers laid up for summer revival. Uh, if you've not prayed for the preacher that's coming, pray for him, pray for his family. Because I want you to know something, going morning and night, I know we're only till Wednesday, but it's stressful. Getting kids ready, which theirs are older, but getting kids ready, getting them in the car, getting them to agree, amen, and getting them to come to church four nights. I want you to know something. If you've not prayed for the ones that come and play music, that take off from their jobs and are here in the morning hours and then back here at night, and, and, and I want you to know something. When, when I raise my hands and say, let's all say thank you, Jesus, and we say thank you, Jesus, and go home, somebody has to start preparing for the next service. Somebody's getting ready for that next morning. The preacher, the musicians, the sound techs, all those people, the cleaners coming in and out through the week to keep the church looking good. But I want you to know all those things are important. But somebody, you're deciding, well, do I want to go to the lake? Do I want to go to revival? Somebody's deciding, do they want to come because they're lost and conviction is in their life? Because they've, they're looking for a place to call home. They're looking for somebody that will accept them on what they are, who they are, and how they are. I want you to know something today. The world judges so many times by a five-second glance. Amen? They, they get to looking at them and say, well, I don't want no part of that. They look like they've had a bad life. I want you to know one of the most important things you can do there in this revival. Don't judge a love. Church, I want you to know we've got a certain call to love those that are... Uh, that are less fortunate than us. And when I say less fortunate, I'm not talking about money and possessions. I'm talking about those that don't know my Jesus. Somebody say amen today. Our job in this revival is to spread the Word of God, the love of God. Listen to me real close with this next one. And the hope of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, because God sent His Son that we might accept Him as our personal Savior. You ought to be excited about revival today. We ought to be excited that we're in the house to praise Him and to worship Him. We ought to be excited that we were fortunate enough for Him to reach down His hand and say, I love you. I love you. You know God loves you today. Somebody say amen. amen. I know God loves me because I wouldn't have got this far without Him. I'm too dumb, too illiterate, and too uneducated to get this far. Somebody else say amen. amen. We're all in that boat today. Because there's things, you may think you know everything. You may have a 4.0 and a big GPA uh, average and you've been to college and you've done all these things. But I want you to know something. We don't know what waits on the other side. But what a joy it's going to be. The Bible says we see through a glass darkly. We, we just see parts of what's happening. Well, I want you to know when time has come. I got to talking about this with Dusty in the office today. When the time has come and we all go stand before that great throne. I want you to know something when he says, Well done, my good and faithful servant. There's going to be something. You ought to be excited about it. There's going to be something seen that eyes have never seen today. We're going to get to see the Savior in flesh. We're going to get to see Him and we can touch Him and we can talk to Him face to face today. What a desire. I love my prayer time with the Lord. Do you? 
Uh, but I'm going to love it when I'm standing holding his hands uh, and talking to him uh, about the blessings in my life and the favor. Listen to this. The favor he has shown on my life because I didn't deserve any of it. But he showed favor on me and my little family. He's showing favor on this church this week. He's showing favor on each and every one of you this week. You ought to be excited today. I am. I'm excited. I love you, church. Before we take up the offering, as we take up the offering, I want to do this. I want to open the doors of the church for the reception of members. By experience of grace, if you've been saved, I want to come as a candidate from baptism. Under the watch care from a sister church, same faith and order. Uh, if you've got your letter with you and you want to come deposit it with the clerk today from a church in the same faith and order, or for some reason you can't get your letter and want to come by statement, listen to this. Statement of salvation. Amen. Ain't that the greatest statement you've ever made in your life? It's the greatest thing I have. You know, you look at my bank account. I don't have a lot, but I can tell you about my statement, and it means the world to me. Uh, but by statement of faith and baptism, by submersion, in the same way Jesus did. So as we uh, go to the Lord in prayer and then we take up offering, the doors of Harmony Church are open for the reception of members. Derry Smith, you lead us in a word of prayer. Most precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord, the ability and the opportunity to come into your house, Lord, and partake of your spirit. Father, I thank you for what I feel. I hope and pray that it touch each and every person in here. Lord, I pray that you just send the power. <laughs> like the old song said, just send the power, Lord. Father, let us leave here different than we came in, Lord. Father, if they be one in here that don't know you and the free pardon of sin, Lord, I pray today be the day that they get to know you like I do, Lord. Father, bless us as we come in. Bless us as we go out. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. three to come this morning, one by experience of grace and two under the watch care. You be seated if you want. Uh, I asked Forrest if he wanted to start it off and he said, nope, dad's got it. So uh, I want to share something with you though. This will tell you a lot about the integrity of this man. I've known him since he was real young, visiting around and sitting down and watching him. And then at Mount Tabor, we got in, acquainted with his mom and dad real well, and his aunt and uncle, and got to see him quite a bit. But he was always loyal to his church. We'd miss him, and I'd ask his dad, I'd say, Robert, where's he at? And he'd say, you know how he is. He was over at his church teaching youth, doing things with them, helping lead, being uh, 
over there helping grow a little church. But this morning, he came in. He said, I got some questions for you. Felt like a job interview. <laughs> he says, me and my family's going to come here. I got three things I want to know. I appreciate that. Don't ever think ask to me a question about the Bible or about God or about the church and the fundamentals is going to offend me because, Harmony, I have no problem putting you up against anybody else and saying it's a great place and we serve a great God. I'll let him start. My name is Dusty Couch. This is my wife, Erica, my oldest son, Forrest, and my youngest son, Waylon. Uh, our, our previous church, um, they had revival uh, the, the first week of July, so I was saved July 15th, right after revival, uh, at work on the, on the game box, and uh, my desire is to, to move my letter from setting down to, to Harmony, become a member here. So you. Um, I was saved on a Sunday afternoon at setting down, and um, I would like to become a member here and move my letter from Sutton down to Harmony. Uh, I was saved here on a Thursday, <laughs> and I would like to be baptized. And become a member. And become a member. There you go. How many of y'all have ever had the chance to shake this young man's hand? He's got one of the firmest handshakes as a young man you'll ever see. Very first time he looked me right in the eyes and shook my hand, I thought, this ain't no little kid. But you know what that means? He's somebody that his daddy told him a handshake means something. A handshake's not only a word, it's about how you live your life. You got some integrity, you got some backbone to you. They some people I believe need to go out in the parking lot and kick themselves in the rear end until they get a backbone, amen? They some people that let anything slide by. This young man won't be one of those. So you've heard their testimonies. They want to move their letter from Setting Down Baptist Church and come in Georgia, and he wants to come as a candidate for baptism uh, and be a member of this church. We'll take them all as a family. We're voting on all three of them as a family. Anybody uh, have any discussion on this matter? Need a move. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, let it known by standing up, if you would. All right, be seated. <laughs> Any opposed, I'm going to ask you just to say nay. All in favor, amen. At the end of service today, we'll bring them around, give them the right hand of uh, Christian fellowship until when their letters are, are brought in and... Uh, when his baptism happens, we'll give them the letters of uh, church fellowship, giving them equal rights and opportunities to uh, any member in the house of God. Great day. Amen. Let's give them a hand <laughs> to bring y'all up after church. Okay.
Songs of redemption, stories of hope, heaven awakened inside my soul. church? Yes. All the kids to children's church.
Seth and Anthony do all my hope. I've been held by a Savior. I felt far from above. And I've been down to the river. I ain't the same, a prodigal return. And all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God. to the prison and I've worn shackles and chains but I've been freed and forgiven I'm not going back I'll never be the same that's why I sing and all my hope is in Jesus There's a kind of thing that just breaks a man. Come on. It breaks him down to his knees. Lord, I've been broken more than a time or two. Yes, I have. But then you pick me up and show me what it means to be a man. I want to sing that all oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God. Yesterday's gone, and all my sins are forgiven. And I've been washed by the blood. I'm gonna sing it out. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Ian, for playing. I can almost bet you he didn't even look at his piano notes. He knows it. <laughs> he don't even need them. Uh, if you got your Bibles and want to follow along with us today, we're going to be in the book of Matthew in the 18th chapter. And then uh, a little further back in the third chapter, the book of Galatians or Colossians, however you want to say it. I know I probably don't say it right. Third chapter, starting in the 18th verse through the 25th verse. Um, there's so many things God showed me this week. I could try and, and preach to you, and, and I could tie it in to our week that we had. Um, was very worried about the week. Um, 
because the weather the week before had been rain most of the time. and It was supposed to be the pattern for last week as well. And uh, God showed up, showed out, had beautiful weather. But uh, a lot of times God ties things together with my family and I know y'all get tired of hearing it. So I want to tell you this, if you want to hear about vacation and hear about our fishing trip and some of the funny things we got to see and encounter and actions of the boys, let's get together some time this week and talk because uh, God's given me a message this morning that'll fit everybody here. And if it don't fit you, then you're putting your feet in the wrong shoes, brother. That's all I'm going to tell you today. You're trying to lace up something that's imaginary. You're trying to lace up something that's false and has no substance to it. If you say, I don't understand any of these seven things he's talking about, then you've got a lot deeper problems, and we need to get in this altar, and we need to figure them out. And uh, I'm not opposed to starting revival today. Amen? I'm, I'm not opposed to, we'll meet up here every night this week, and we get done. Uh, Joey, I'm going to try my best this week. I failed you with this pickleball, but I'm just not a runner. Can y'all tell that? Uh, <laughs> I'm not very, <laughs> yeah. I'm not very athletic. One can recognize another. One can recognize another. Amen. Uh, you go in, in uh, the attic at the house or the basement, and you're not going to find no track star or tennis star. I'm, I'm not a Ian Costley over here and excel at every sport I play. I found one where I could just be angry and hit people, and I enjoyed it, and so I played football. Uh, they call that fouls and all, all that in other uh, games, and you get thrown out for it, but. How is your relationship status? This week, I've I seen a lot of it, you know, on uh, Facebook. Um, Y'all can tell my wife and my children, well, except for Josiah, he was in there with me a lot, but they love the beach, and I'm not a big fan of it. I've made my living for years in the sun uh, on roofs. I don't want to go pay money to sit in the sun. I'm on vacation. I'm going to relax in the condo with the air conditioner. Amen? So... Uh, Anyway, I've seen a lot of people's over the 4th of July and different things. I've seen the relationship status changed. Married, divorced, single, it's complicated. <laughs> Unfriend. Because <laughs> them, them, them complicated ones are going to be the first ones that want to call you and say, what should I do? Well, I don't know. It ain't never been complicated for me. I love her. She loves me. And we're going to be together till one of us dies. I'm in too far now. Amen? Yeah. There's an insurance policy Alicia's waiting on. But anyway, I've seen a lot of people's relationship status change. And it got me to thinking, what is our relationship status? Not only with our spouses, not only with our significant other, but with our children. What does is, what is our children think about us? How do we... How much do we love our children? How much do we appreciate that God gave them to us? You know that, don't you? God gave you those children. You had nothing to do with it. You had a little something, but God chose that child for you. Amen? That child's personality, listen to this, is a reflection of how you raise them and the love and compassion that you put into them. Do you know that? That personality. Uh, and we... we Got to thinking, how many, how many of you have a good relationship with your friends, your coworkers? And listen to this one. This one's important. We, we overlook it. But I believe everybody should have a good relationship with their boss, don't you? I believe they should because he's the one that signed or she's the one that signs your check. And they're the one that ultimately determines if you're showing up on Monday after you get that check. You know, you should, you should know their family. You should know their circle. You should be involved in their lives and, 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 and have a, a connection with them, a relationship with them. And the most effective verse I can think of to explain this, and this, you know, and I, and I don't even want to say I thought of it. God sent it to me. And it's a very, very familiar verse, Matthew 18, 19, and 20. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And you say, well, preacher, that's talking about 
We got to have two or three or more gathered to have church. I want you to know something. Where two or three or more are gathered, he said, there I am in the midst. He talks about it uh, not just for church. Listen, this may be a news flash for you, but we should have two or three or more gathered together in agreement and Jesus will be in the midst. That means He will be in our lives not only at church, but every day of our life. And I, I thought about that, that verse right there all week long. Some of you come in here and, and you, you go to church. <laughs> you go to church. And you say, well, I was at church on Sunday, but I'm going to ask you this, where was you really at? Where was you really at? Was you at church in the flesh? Or was you at church in the Spirit with two or three or more gathered together and Jesus was in the midst? I've seen churches full that Jesus felt like an intruder when He tried to go in because there was so much uh, strive and contention and, and tearing apart and backbiting. But y'all want to know what backbiting is? Do y'all know what that is? Go to church on Sunday and go out of the doors of the church. Oh my God, did you see her? Did you see him? Did you, oh boy, my kid would never do that. Yes, they would if you didn't have control and you didn't show them love and you didn't show them compassion. But people have different circumstances. So you know what you should do? You should go to that him or her or that mother or that father and you should love them and you should come together with them and then Jesus would be in the midst and they'd feel like you loved them and cared for them, not because of their situation, but because of their connection through Christ. Amen? I'm going to ask the question today. How many of you here love me? Has your pastor ever asked you that? Raise your hands. I'm asking the question. How many of you here love me? All right, put them down. How many of you love me because I'm your pastor or because we're brother and sister in Christ? You tell me. Because I'm your pastor? You love me because of that? Or do you love me because we're brothers and sisters in Christ? Amen. Raise your hands if you love me because we're yoked together. Do you know what yoked is? Yoked is when two people or two things are put together. A marriage yokes two people together. A team of oxen are yoked together. When one moves, the other moves. You want to know why I think Harmony has such success as a church? It's because you're yoked together. Amen. Oh, we pray for the pastor and the revival help to be yoked together. It won't do no good if the pastor and his church is not yoked together before the revival help comes in. Amen? Where two or three or more are gathered, I'll be in the midst. I want to see Jesus in the midst, don't you? And so this, this came to us. This verse, this verse tells us of God's intentions. This were two or three or more. From the very beginning... It tells us these attentions. If we had a team, any team, any sport, any uh, uh, thing that we could think of, and there was a team out there representing that, that, that brand, that name, it'd be very easy to tell the one that wasn't yoked in, wouldn't it? If it was basketball, you'd see some moving around in sync, and the other would be dragging their feet, missing shots. We all have those I'm just not feeling it days, don't we? We can't have those when it comes to church and when it comes to Jesus. We can't have those. We can't have those, well, I'm going to skip today and I'll come back tomorrow or I'll come back next week. Well, we got revival. Listen, I, I'm, if, if you're soft-toed today, I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little close, but I've got my toes drawn up. I wore my bigger shoes today so I could draw my toes up a little bit myself. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm going to preach to myself today. Because you know what? It's not my word. It's God's word. How many of you here know that? It's not my word. It's God's word. And, and the pastor don't ever get to get preached to uh, but unless God gives it to us. You say, well, I can go to my pastor. I can go to, to, uh, to my friend and I can confide in him. But I can go to my pastor, pastor and he'll talk to me and he'll pray with me. Who does the pastor go to to talk to and pray? You ever thought about that? Boy, God gets us right in the neck and shakes us hard. Amen. He gets us and shakes us hard. Today I want to talk to you about your relationship, not only with God, but with others. And there's seven things that you can do to build a stronger, loving, lasting relationship with all of these. I, I mentioned co-workers, bosses, friends, just anybody you may come into, in contact with. 
Uh, God has always been about loving each other. He created Adam and Eve. Listen, the Bible says that He created... Ain't, ain't this funny how this was all done wrote down when you come into my office and, and asked me? He said, who created man? He wanted to know where I stood. You say, was well, He questioning you? Every one of you should question me. Amen? Every one of you. I live in a glass house and I'll tell you today, I don't have anything to hide from you because I can give you the simple answer. If you find fault in me, I'm going to tell you this. I'm as carnal as you are and I have sins in my life the same as you do. Amen? You say, well, Pastor, you saying you sin every day? To live in this world and not sin, your name would have to be Jesus. And I'm not Him. Don't ever want to be even close to him. I want you to understand this from the pulpit today, Harmony. I'm human. Amen. I'm a man. I'm flesh. But I have a Savior who has bought and paid the price for me. But he wants you to understand he created Adam and Eve. And he, he had Adam created there. And, and he uh, formed the earth. And he blew into his nostrils. And life came. Then he seen he was alone and needed a companion. God knew he needed somebody to love him. How many of you in here today are hard-hearted and said, I don't need nobody in life. I don't, I don't need nobody to love me. I love myself just enough. Well, that's your first problem there. You love yourself more than you should. You should let people love you. You should let people in. It's okay. And, and, and so he created Eve. He, he put him to sleep and he took his rib out there and, and he created Eve. And so from the beginning he's always been about having a relationship. And why did he create Adam and why did he create Eve? To have a relationship with him. God was lonely. God wanted a relationship with mankind and God said, I've got a great plan. I'm going to create people to love me, to spread my word and to worship me. And you may think, well, God, God just wanted us to worship Him. Yes, He did. How long has it been since you worshipped Him? He is the creator of all things. Do you believe that today? I do. I believe if it flies, floats, swims, whatever it does, if it walks on the earth, whatever it may do, it is of God. If it exists, it's because He exists. If it happens, it's because He allowed it to happen. You say, well, that's, that's just a wide range. I'm going to tell you, nothing happens that God don't know about. Amen. Nothing happens. Relationships between Jesus and the Father are seen throughout the whole Bible. He said, let us create man in our image. And then he went on and he said, the, the, in the beginning the Word was God and the Word was with God and then the Word became flesh. That was a relationship between God and Jesus and the Word became flesh. And then when the Word became flesh and people didn't receive it, He took the Word back. He brought His Son back to Him through the crucifixion. And then uh, Jesus told everybody, He said, Where I'll go, uh, there's a place prepared for me, not made by hands, but don't be afraid. I'm paraphrasing here. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. And in a few days later, the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost, uh, Brother Ted, I know you know that the day of Pentecost uh, the fire from cloven tongues fell upon them and they began to speak in tongues and they began uh, to be saved some 3,000 was saved on the day of Pentecost what was that it was a relationship of God and Jesus uh, transcending to the Holy Spirit and being connected to us so we could be part of the relationship how many of you have read about the day of Pentecost in Acts, if you ain't read it, start in the front and you'll get it all. So he had the relationship between Jesus and the Father. Jesus and the church. Wow. He said, on this rock, I will build my church. We've been called His from the very beginning. Do you believe that today? We've been called His. He built His church. You say, well, my grandfather, my great-grandfather's name was on the first deed. I, I want you to know something today. I'm as historical as anybody, but I want you to know something. Those men, those women that was uh, here when Harmony was constituted, they were sent by God to church. Listen to this today. Your name may be on a pew. Your name may be on a wall. Your name may be on a membership roll. But this church today belongs to God. Amen. It's His. It's not ours. 
You say, well, we got signatures on the bank and, and some can get and some can, can't and some can do this. That's Harmony's money. I want you to know something. It's all God's. And I, I'll, I'll get on some other point here today too if you don't. And, and I'm telling you, there's coming one here before long on tithing. But 10% of what's in your bank account belongs to God as well. It all does. But 10% of it, you're required. Listen, I'm going to say that word again. You're required to give it to God to lead and be the Christian. You call yourself to be 10% before anything else belongs to God. And I want to tell you something. If you're not doing that, you should. And then you'll find more joy in your life. There was a time... Not, not too long ago, through the winter months and into March, that I wasn't doing that. That I wasn't doing that. And I made a commitment that I was going to start doing that. And I want you to know something, my life's been so much different. When I left Silver City and I came here, it was hard to transition from not giving there and give here and I'd do it a little here, a little there. But a few months ago, God said, put your money where your mouth is. Amen. And brother, I love it. It's been good. I've seen things happen in my life that probably never would have happened had I not done that. But the relationship between Jesus and the church, the church and each other as the body of Christ. Do you know you're part of a body today? As I stand here before you, if, if listen to this, it gets real simple. If I lost one or two or three of my toes, my balance would be different because if you notice, and, and some of you may have had accidents or whatever, but, but if you notice when people lose extremities, the other side has to compensate. How many of you here today has got a bad knee or a bad hip and, and then the other one starts failing and they say, well, it's because you've overcompensated for the, the lack or the disability of the other. So many churches are handicapped today because the right side's having to carry the left side or the left side's having to carry the right side. You are a member of the body of Christ. We all have to do the same. That's where you draw your feet up, ain't it? You're telling me I'm just as responsible as you, Pastor? You're right, I'm telling you that. You telling me I'm just as responsible as the chairman of the deacon board and the deacons? I'm telling you exactly that point. If it's not getting done the way you want it done, listen to me real close when I tell you this. If it's not getting done the way you want it done, step up to the line, take charge, because it's your job to do. A lot of people won't have that today. A lot of you says, well, I'm gonna, I wish you'd have preached about his vacation. I'm going to tell you something, church, listen to this, and this is going to be a pretty profound statement. Get right or get left. Church is moving. Do you, want to, do you know that today? The church is growing. Brother Kip said it last week in, in, in his things, going places and doing things we've never done. You say, well, I've heard him say that before. I don't think a lot of you know the things we do and the places we go. Why? Because you're a member of the body that's relaxed. Took some time off. But it's because your relationship with the church is not what it should be. And why is that? Because your relationship with God is not where it should be. That's deep, ain't it, Seth? Because you know what? What would Jesus do? That was a very powerful phrase. It's been for years. I could tell you what he would do. He wouldn't sit by and let others do it. He wouldn't sit by and let it happen and not, not step up and try to prevent it. He'd be about the Father's business. That's what he said in the Bible. He says, I must be about the Father's business. Well, if you're about the Father's business, it means you have a relationship with the Father in the first place and you want to make sure the Father's happy and things are going the way the Father wants them to go. How many of you in here still have your dad and you want to make dad happy? You want to make dad uh, 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 proud of you? You want to hear dad say, good job, my son. Good job, my daughter. Well, I'll tell you something today. That's the way we should live our lives before God to let God pour blessings out on us and say, I'm proud of you. Uh, good job. I've raised you well I've led you well but a lot of us think out of sight out of mind 
the relationship between spouses. And I'm going to read a few verses here. And the first two, the men are probably going to look over at their wives and say, Did you hear what he said? Then I'm going to get to number uh, the two verse, the second verse. And the wives are going to look at their husband. I heard him. Did you hear him? People take this out of context so much. But this is the meat of it today. Colossians 3, 18. Some of you have probably done looked at it. Men, get ready. It's, it's your time to gloat right here. But be ready for what I tell you in just a minute about this and what it means. Because it puts you in that same category. Some of you may close your Bibles after I read this. Some of you may turn me off with your ears. But please listen to me today. It's a lot deeper than what the words say. There's meaning in it. Wives, in, in, in 3.18, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit uh, in the Lord. Amen? I know all you guys are wanting to say amen so you can get home and you'll, you'll put this on replay on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube and say, did you hear what Tony said Sunday? Did you? Some of you had not heard a word I said in four months, but you're going to hear this. <laughs> did you hear what he said? Make me a sandwich. Did you hear what he said? Bring me a glass of tea. Some of you men are going to come in here next week with black eyes. Some of you may wake up about Wednesday after they hit you twice. But it says, Submit yourselves unto your own husbands that it is fit for the Lord. What does that mean? It means let your husband as it is fit for the Lord. Let your husbands lead the house as long as the husbands are leading the house in a manner that is fit for the Lord. Let your husbands have respect as long as the respect they give you is fit for the Lord. Let your husbands, you love your husbands as long as your husband loves you as it is fit for the Lord. Do you understand that today? It don't mean she's your maid. It means she's your helpmate. Only got one amen on that. How many of you guys want to go sit back in the gym for a little while after church today? Love them uh, like they love you. That's what it means. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. I fail here every day. Amen. <laughs> I'm being truthful with you today, church. And I know it sometimes it may be funny, it may be comical, and that's all right. But it says, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Why does it say that? They're not going to always make the right choice because they can't submit themselves to you because you're not being the leader you need to be. <laughs> yeah. See, man, I told you I was going to come around and bite you. Everything pretty has got a dark side to it. Everything sweet has got a bitter taste to it. But it goes on to say this. It says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Children, listen to me today. Well, I have to obey my parents because they tell me I have to. No, obey your parents because it's the right thing to do by God because God gave you to them as a gift God gave you those great parents. I want you to know something. I'd ask every one of you in here today, I had the best parents in the world. Some of you may have a different story, but it falls back up to the other. The father wasn't the leader. And, and I want you to know something today in the society we live in, there's so many fathers that are donors and not fathers. There's so many fathers that want to father a child, but they don't want to be a father to the child. And don't get me wrong, there's, there's mamas too. But obey your parents in all things. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. What does that mean? Fathers, it means don't stand over them and tell them, that's not good enough, that's not the right way, that's not good, that's wrong, let's step it up. Come on, be better than that. Fathers, we shouldn't uh, discourage our children from having, listen to this, imagination. But we also shouldn't, listen, teach hate to them. 
If we teach hate to our children, that's a word I don't even like to say in the pulpit. If we teach hate to our children, then they don't know how to love it un, uh, with the purest of love because then they have question. Well, does dad like this? Am I making dad happy? I want you to know something today and you listen to this statement. You do what God tells you and daddy will be just fine because God ain't going to lead you down a road of destruction. God's going to lead you to the pathway of righteousness and dad should be proud. I've seen some hard Hard dads broken when their children come to an altar and stand up and say, I've been saved. And I've watched them men that were so stern and them men that were so solid in their word. And them, them men, listen, this, this world's different than what the world used to be uh, uh, back when my dad growed up. Uh, my dad bar fights and everything else and working at the VFW as a bouncer and all those things. He'd seen some hard things. But I can tell you what, when I made one mistake in life and I come to him and I said, Dad, I know you told me not to, but, but Dad, I, you know, I owned up to it right away uh, because I, parents find out. Y'all know that? There's a circle. There's a circle of parents. And you live in a small county. And a lot of times, Dad was sitting in the recliner before I got home because he already knew about it. And he'd say, what you been doing? He gave me a chance to own up to it. He gave me a chance to lie to him as well. But I knew Dad already knew. But I watched that same hard dad that I'd heard about these stories. And God, he's tough. I've told y'all many times about my dad. He was the type of man that wore a short sleeve shirt unbuttoned to about right here year round. Never wore a jacket. Cold didn't bother him. He was Superman. Cold didn't bother him. You couldn't hurt his feelings. But as I told him what I'd done, he broke and he cried. And he said, son, you've let me down. But I still love you. That's what Jesus does. Goes on and <clears throat> Servants, obey in all things your matters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in a singleness of heart, fearing God. Amen. What if we looked at church that way? I'm not here to please nobody. I'm not here for somebody to see me, but I'm here to please God. What would some of you have to do today? I can tell you this, some of you would have to move closer to this altar. Some of you would have to move closer up here and say, let me get a little warmth from the fire. Let me, let, me, let me get up to this altar so I can pray that, listen, there's nothing better than sitting here in the front of this church. I, I don't get, hey, you think this pew up here is just for me? You come sit with me anytime you want. But there's nothing better than sitting up here and hearing a saying of God let out a shout or an amen, hearing a song or hearing footsteps and you're just waiting. Who's coming now? Who's coming now? Who's coming to the altar? Somebody, then they turn and go to the bathroom. I'll, I'll go as far to say this today. Deacons, y'all listen to me. Elders of the church, if y'all ever get the opportunity to build another church, the bathroom needs to be in the back. Amen? Yeah. But, but to sit here and to hear the anticipation, it's, it's not just eye service when they start towards this altar. It shouldn't be eye service. It should be that God has told me I need to pray. And you know what it tells me over the past few months, the past seven, eight years? God ain't speaking to some of you people because this altar, I, I want to be honest with you today, this altar is not used like an altar should be used. It's a place you bring all your cares, all your prayers, all your blessings you don't have to be broken and dismantled to use the altar. It's okay to come back and say, I just came back to cry holy. I just came back to give praise. I just came back to say thank you, Father, for what you've done in my life. But we shouldn't be of eye service. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Some of us spend our time trying to please people, and when those people die, their family's going to split their inheritance, sell off their land, and do all those things, and you ain't going to get nothing from it. You're going to say, well, man, he told me he loved me. She told me that I, I mean, she, if she ever died, I was going to, you know, be able to have part in her funeral. I was going to be able to sing. I was going to be able to do this. Family didn't even look at me. Did you have a relationship with them like you had with the other? 
We should have that same relationship with everyone. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for what the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. You know what that means in this church today? We're all on a level playing field. So yes, you have the same responsibilities as me because we're going to stand the same judgment. If someone comes in here lost and undone, it may not be me that's supposed to lead them to the Lord. It may be you. You say, well, I knew they was lost, but I didn't do nothing. Well, I didn't know it. I was just preaching the word of God and they, they didn't like me. It's up to you. The most important of these steps is step one. I'm going to go through these seven steps and we're going to try to close. <clears throat> step one. Realize that relationships are twofold. It takes two. Amen? Like I said earlier, if you're in a relationship with just yourself and you love yourself and nobody's good enough for me or nobody else understands me, then there's something wrong with you. There's a reason why nobody loves you. There may be some bitterness there. There may be some attitude there. Fix you, and then you can love others and let others love you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love others, and they will love you. Care for others, and they will care for you. Help others, and they will help you when in need. If others don't help you love or care back, they have an issue, not you. We spend so much time trying to base, well, they didn't, they didn't hold the door for me. I'm not holding the door for them. They didn't get pick up my plate at Bible school and throw it in the trash and they picked up somebody else's. Did you pick up their plate and take it? Did you pick up somebody else's plate and take it? My child was in the altar and I looked back and they were sitting down. Well, what about when they were in the altar and you didn't come up? I can go on and on with many of these. We've got to love for everybody else and do for everybody else like we would want them to do for us. That's one of the greatest commandments. Listen to this little saying I found this week. It says, build a fence around your heart, not a wall. Wow. What's the difference in a fence and a wall? They'll, they'll both keep people out. This is why you allow others to see in, but not readily touch it. They can see your life. They can look at your life but they can't let it really touch it. And then you let them approach and behold and consider the beauty of what you're living. Well, when we go home, we shut the doors and close the blinds and turn the AC on, turn the lamps on. We don't even turn the big lights on and we sit in our house and we, we uh, kumbaya, whatever it may be. We study the Bible and we do this and we do that. Uh, you do it all in the privacy of your home. How does anybody else know you're doing those things? Live out your life before the people as you would live it out before God. That's a hard thing to do sometimes. To let people in your circle. And this is where I'm going to have to keep up. Because some of this I had saved on a little word sheet and I didn't get time to write it all back down this morning. What are your God-centered relationships what are they today? Do you, do you, have you even checked up on them? Your relationship with God, where's it at today? When's the last time you prayed to Him? When's the last time you asked Him to lead you, to guide you, to help you make a decision? I'm that person, if I want it, I get it. If I want to do it, I go do it. It's not always healthy. It's just the way I've always been. But here recently, after the last few scares of health I've had I've asked God what do you want for me out of my life where do you want me to be where do you want me to go and this time of year everybody gets tore up about it well you know it's coming up revival time and the, the preacher leave the preacher go he's been here a while what's going to happen what's not going to happen well I can tell you this God said stay and I'm planning on staying so we can get that out of the way before revival because I don't want any of you troubled about it through revival and some lost soul go out into this world and never set foot back in a church. God said there's a field here that needs somebody to watch over it. I've chose you to watch over it. Now if you want to leave, you leave. You cry, you whine, you do whatever you want. But God will speak to you plainly and tell you what He wants you to do if you'll open up and let Him in and ask Him the question, God, what do you want me to do in my life? God, where do you want me to go? Dustin, probably one of the hardest things you've ever done leaving the church you was born in and grew up in. 
But God sent him here. Why? Because you love his family. You love his children. You accept him and her and the family as they are without judgment. You love them pure. Why is that? Because you want the same love back. And I have no doubt that they're not going to love you the same. Let God in. So what, how's your relationship with God? What about your husband or your wife? How's your relationship with them? How, how's, how's a Wednesday or a Monday morning relationship with your husband or wife? Them weekends are a little different. You got time to get away from each other and do those things. But when you got to go to work, he or she may be off that day. How many of you get a little bitter about that? I do. I call her 15, 20 times during the day. What are you doing? Where are you at? And I rub it in. Well, I'm at work. Somebody's got to work. <laughs> Do I not? I, I try to make her feel guilty. When you know what I should be doing? Look, I'm going to preach it from the pulpit. I should be lifting her up and praising her that she's excelled so well. Listen, I'm going to let out a story here today. My wife probably makes more a year than I do. Why? Because she's put her heart into it. She's had compassion. But how many times do I tell her that? How many times do you tell yours that? How many times do you thank them for their commitment and their contribution to the marriage? Well, I didn't think about it. We got married and she's supposed to be mine. I'm supposed to be hers. She's supposed to submit to me and I'm supposed to love her. It's all good. You can buy a dog, but if you don't train that dog anything and you don't show that dog love and respect, that dog is going to pee on your front porch and poop in your yard. I'm being honest with you today, church. You can marry your husband or wife and, and tell them you love them, but if you don't show them appreciation and consideration and congratulations and let them know that they're contributing to the marriage, they're going to feel like they're out. And what happens when that happens? Somebody ends up stepping out. You want a strong church, you find people that can deal with problems in a marriage and you'll find a strong church because the husband and wife are worshiping together, they're praying together, they're doing things together and you'll see God bless it. Anybody disagree with me? It's the truth. Say amen. amen. Parent, how's your relationship with your son or daughter? Does your kids give you respect? Did you teach them? Did you show them respect? I'd like to think that we give our boys every opportunity and every freedom. They can go and do as they want. And you know, that was never a situation. We just always tell them, be careful. And I'm not going to stand up here and praise my children, but they're the only ones I know this about. But when Zach got his license, I told Alicia, I said, we'll never see him. He'll be gone. He's got a big friend circle. He's the quarterback of the football team. We'll never see him. We probably spent more Friday nights with him after that because... He just didn't want to go nowhere. He went to work out, he went to practice, and he came home. Work out, practice, come home. There's been times we get to him and say, son, don't you have friends to go hang out with? <laughs> Me and mom would like to go out somewhere and not take you with us. You're 16, got a vehicle, don't you? I'll stay at home and watch Netflix. I'm all right, y'all go. You say, is that a bad thing? I kind of like to think of it after this week that they love us because we love them. I like to think our children love us. Do you, do you know what your relationship is with your children? With the church, brothers and sisters in the Lord, where's, where's your relationship with them? Can they come to you with their problems? Can you go to them with yours? Uh, what about your pastor? I didn't ask you this question. Do you love me just because I stand in this position or do you love me because we're brothers and sisters in Christ? We've done went through that one. To your employer, then, then with others. Four, nurture and feed your God-centered relationships. Take time to share your life with your family in your workplace and in your church. You say, well, I don't want to let them know I got problems. I don't want to let them know I got concerns. If you don't let them know, they can't pray for you. Some will get mad at the pastor because he didn't come and visit. He didn't come and see. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you a, 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 just a, a worldwide uh, thing here. There's a lot of deacons here today and former deacons and people that used to serve as deacons, but I'm going to tell you something. Read your Bible and find out the pastor's job is to preach the word and the gospel. The deacons were set aside to tend to the needs of the uh, uh, widows and the, and the church. 
So listen to this before you throw that rock at me and say, well, where's the pastor at? Where's the pastor? Where's the pastor? All right, the pastor should be there. I agree with you 100%, but he should have a deacon board right behind him. It's our job. It's our calling. It's our duty. It's what we were laid hands on to do. It's what we should do, but we have to do it together. But we don't know because you don't say. We're going to keep our problems concealed. Somebody might cast judgment. So we're not going to let the church know. But then things go south and something really bad happens. Well, where was y'all at when it started? Well, you didn't tell me about it. I'll hear stories of somebody been in the hospital three, four, five days. Well, they're upset. They ain't seen you. I didn't know they was there. We have more communication capability right now than we've ever had in our lifetimes. We can look at a phone and talk to somebody in another country. Lord, help. But when things go bad in our lives, we don't want to open up and tell somebody because we're afraid they'll cast judgment. Why? Because we don't have a good relationship with them. We don't have a good relationship in the church. We don't feel that we can trust them. That's why we have to work on all these relationships. They all work together. Take five seconds to look around the congregation and make a mental note of who is not here today. Just take a minute and look around and say, who's not here? Then find out where should I go find them at. Should I call them, tell them I miss them? I spend time doing that every week. Do you? Well, you're the pastor. It's your responsibility. It's yours too. We're in this together. Let me, let me tell you something. When the time comes and we step down from being the pastor at Harmony, when that time comes, I'm still a member here. Thank God. Amen. And I, for one, am not going to say it's his job to do it because then it's my job again too. You never leave that job. We're supposed to take care of each other. Go out to lunch with a different individual or family uh, one Sunday out of the month and spend time getting to know them. A few years back, we bought some gift cards and gave to several people and said, take two or three other people and go out to lunch. Some of those are still meeting. The pastor shouldn't have to buy you all gift cards and say, go take somebody to lunch. You've got to show initiative yourself. Anybody here that's still in one of them small groups? Stand up if you would. Do you love it? You got real close, had you? When you got trouble in your life, they're the first ones you call, right? See what I mean? Plant a seed and watch it grow. Plant a seed and watch it grow. It may cost you $40 to feed their family. But I'm going to tell you what, you'll have a lifetime of memories. A lifetime of memories. All of us have something that we can bring into the relationship that the other half doesn't have. I got some of the best jokes in the world. Do you? I'm ready. Who wants to go to lunch today? Y'all don't like that? I'll buy who wants to go to lunch. See that? Now we're getting people. You may have a charming personality. I'm missing that. You wouldn't amen my jokes? <laughs> it's because I don't have that personality. Have you shared it with me? You see what I'm saying? We get together and then everything becomes a lot more fun. At a time like this, when the pastor feels like he's preaching a message, stepping on your toes, and we can still laugh in the church. You know why? Listen to this real close. We're family. We're a family and a body of Christ. We should love like that. We should give like that. Letting the other person know what they mean to you. Oh, wow. I don't want to share my feelings. I don't want to get all sappy. You'll be the first to share when the Bulldogs win the national championship or the Braves win, win the national championship or if the Falcons ever win a game. <laughs> I told y'all I had good jokes. You'll be happy to share those things, but why not call somebody up and say, you know, your consistency at church has really drove me to be a better Christian and be there more. Your love and compassion for the children, Sean O'Brien, has really showed me that I need to know these children more. Lisa, Henderson, Michelle, Reynolds, I'm just calling a few. Katie, these that's uh, Erica stepping up there in Bible school, the, the, these leaders that 
listen to this. Y'all might not even, some of you may not even know this. You stood up and voted to put them on the kid men ministry part and, and we're going to be voting on it again. I think you should all know what that kid men involves. They're here early on Wednesday printing off copies, meeting through the week and making sure those kids have the right curriculum to make the right choices in life. It's a love and a passion. How many of you have went to them and said, thank you for doing that? You're helping build our church. You're helping grow our future. You're helping in such a way. No, but they get the, oh my God, we got to do something about these riding toys. I can't eat my free Wednesday night meal because they're riding toys in the gym. We got to do something about these balls. Didn't we build an outside court for them kids to go out in the middle of December and play on the outside court? How about getting up from your table and go play ball with some of them kids? How about getting up from the table and going teaching? Listen to me real close. We don't have perfect kids by no means. But guess what? Those mamas and daddies bring them to church. They may need some help teaching those kids to say, Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. I'm sorry. May I hold the door from you? We shouldn't complain. Listen real close. We shouldn't complain about anybody that God lets come into the church. Because you know why? He knows we need them. But listen to this part. They need us even more. These lunches of love, this bus we bought. Oh my gosh. This, if you let your feet out, draw them up again. Well, I'll tell you, I just can't believe we spent that much on a bus. I can't believe, listen, your pastor, I can't believe we didn't buy two of them. I can't believe we didn't buy bigger ones. Because those are full every Wednesday night. Uh, Coming in here for what? Pastor, we love the food. Can I go get seconds? Pastor, you're really funny. You can't play sports, but you tried. Those kids are honest. We got to build relationships. Most of us know how to affirm people, especially people who are like us and people from whom we want something. But we sometimes do not affirm those who are closest to us because we take them for granted. Oh, Lord. God bless you if you're going to have to stand at Ingram's or Bearden Funeral Home one day and say, I wish I'd have told them. How I love to hear him sing. Ian, I love to hear you play the piano. Ronnie, I love to hear you hit them notes. Yeah. But he knows that. I've told him that plenty of times before. Ian knows I love to hear him play because I've told you before. We've been on the football field and talked about church, haven't we? And the only reason why, because I kept hearing the defensive coach say, Ian, you, you can't get in it. Ian, you got to step it up. And I'd go over to Ian just to break his little bit of disappointment there. And I said, man, that was a good service Sunday, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there was never a doubt where Ian was on the defensive side of the ball because the coach stayed right behind him. But you know what? It, it changed the way he done the game. He didn't just keep doing the same mistakes over and over. He learned and he changed. But we need to affirm people, build them up. Fathers can affirm their children but are careless with their wives. Church people can affirm one another at church and are careless with the, their family members at home. Wow, that hits home, don't it? How many of you have more to do with your church members than your church family than you do your real family? Yeah, me too. Y'all need some family members? I'll donate some. I got some at the top of the list right now. Make God, number five, and I'm about done. Make God the center of all your relationships. Build the relationships around God, starting with your wife and your children. Get back to that submit and love each other. Love your wives. Get back to that and make that work. And if you build it around God, I promise you it won't fail. If you build it around God in church, realize that people will let you down, but God never will. Well, that's a hard thing for a pastor, but Lord, have I learned it the hard way. We love you. We, we, we just care for you so much. And Then when a little bit of trouble comes, they're way over in another pastor. 
We see some come through the church and, oh, we found our church home, we found our forever. Something comes up somewhere else, it looks a little more inviting, it looks a little more easy. And there's Facebook posts, we love our church family. We love, and you know what? That hurts the pastor. It does. Because our job is to love everybody that comes in, that God gives us the opportunity. And when you feel like you've done that to the best of your ability, you automatically begin to question, what did I do? And you send text after text after text, and they go unanswered and unanswered. And then you, you say, well, God's got it. There's nothing I can do. But you've got to make those people know that, that, that you love them. Use God's Word as a guide for your relationships. Love above everything else. Have you ever, has anybody in here ever done anybody wrong? Okay. Then you deserve to be done wrong. Love past it. That's a hard one to swallow, ain't it? If you've done somebody wrong, then you deserve to be done wrong. Eye for an eye. But you got to love through it. You got to love past it. And I swear I'm, I'm trying to close. Love never fails. 1 John 4 19 says, We love because he first loved us. You know what though? He loved us and we've done him wrong. As people, as a generation, as, as a society, we've done him wrong. And if you sit idle and you sit quiet when the word of Jesus needs to be spoken, the love of God needs to be given out and you sit idle, guess what you're doing? You're doing God wrong. You're doing him wrong. God sends you to love and God sends you to build relationship. The statement has been made uh, that says this, we can't love until we've been loved and we can only love to the degree which we have been loved. So men, women, if you're thinking, well, my husband or my wife don't love me, how have you loved them? How have you loved them? If you can make the statement, and it'd be a very bold statement, well, pastor, God just don't love me. How have you loved God? The church won't miss me. Have you loved the church? My friends won't miss me. Have you loved your friends? That's deep, ain't it? Maybe I won't take no long time off anymore. Be willing, number seven, the last one. Be willing to forgive if need be and say, listen to this, I'm sorry and I messed up. That's not in some people's vocabulary, is it? I'm sorry and I messed up. One of Josiah's favorite phrases is, I didn't do it. Well, Josiah, I know Zach didn't come out and cut grass. You had to do it. Well, it was already that way. Okay. Am I supposed to believe that? I hope so. I want you to know today I love you. And I've messed up in my life. But it still don't mean I don't love you as much, if not more, than I did. Because when we all come back together, we have a relationship with God, the church, and the family. I wonder today where you stand in this relationship with God. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. Church, submit yourselves to God. Church, love God as you expect to be loved. Give to God as you expect to be given to. Share God as you expect to have your things shared. A relationship is an important thing and it takes two. Where do you stand today? Y'all get a song. Where's your relationship with the Lord? I'll go ahead and ask the Couch family if they'll come up. Everybody please stand. you time to quit thinking about it. Has anybody got anything you want to say? Anybody? Visitor, member alike. You're here. We love you all. We're going to sing this verse and as we sing this verse you come around. We'll start over here with Finn. Finn, you listening? <laughs> Finn, you come through this way right here and you go back out that way. Michelle, y'all sitting on the back when those come through, y'all come down and come through. Everybody will come through this way. Once they're done, Terry, you'll come across and go out that way. Y'all understand that? Let's see if we can make it this time. Y'all understand that? What? 
All right, Finn's in charge, so it's his fault if it messes up. Look, today I want you to know this. I know that was a long message. It's 1245, and I know you're ready to go get lunch. But I want to let you know this. God loves you. God loves you. This church loves you. And I just want you to do this with me right now. If you'll be here for anybody, if they ever ask you, just lift your hand up towards heaven. Say this with me. I'm here. here. You know what here means? Help everyone. Restore everyone. God give me that. 2008. And I've not been brave enough to do what I was supposed to do with it. But there comes a point in everybody's life when they need somebody to call. And we've all said it. I'm here if you ever need me. But are you really there? Are you really there? To where they know that in that last moment of desperation they could call you and you'd pick up and you'd say, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm here. Y'all come around give them the right hand of Christian fellowship. We love you. We appreciate you. And after you've done this, you're free to go. Church hymnal 331. Church Finn doesn't give up leadership.